What's up everybody and today we're reacting to The Young Man Origin of SCP-106. This is by SCP Animated Tales from the Foundation. Um, I've been recommended this quite a few times. I know I was supposed to put out a um, Spec Ops The Line video today but unfortunately I'm having some issues with the copyright on that because it's like uh, there's a lot of radio music on it. So I have to figure that out. But I should get that started very soon. But for now, we're going to react to some more SCP because I love this stuff and you love this stuff. So we're going to keep looking at it. Uh, but before we get started, as per usual, members, you're amazing. I love you. I couldn't do this without you. I honestly couldn't make videos every single day if it wasn't for you members. So thank you for supporting the channel as much as you do. Don't forget, links down below to all the usual stuff, including my socials and the two links to the two discords that I have. I have the military discord strictly for all things military, and I have the geek discord for anything SCP, Warhammer, Halo, Metro, video games, D&D, &D, everything in between, okay, guys? So join whichever one you want. Also, link down below to the podcast and the Twitch stream where I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but I'm taking this week off, so I'll see you on Monday. But for now... Let's shut up and let's react to SCP-106, The Young Man. Weird. Nobody could like Corporal Lawrence. That's not to say that nobody tried or that he was somehow unfriendly. Merely that he was one of those few that seemed to be wired differently. Oh, However, okay. in the trenches of World War I, normalcy was at best a relative term. Lawrence fought, listened to orders, and didn't disrupt the other soldiers, and that was- Firstly, before we get started, obviously this is a different SCP channel that I'm reacting to. I really like this animation. I really like it. Simple. was required. So what if the people felt increasingly uncomfortable around him, in a place where the baseline of concern was the flesh rotting off your bones while you were still alive, a little personality conflict- yeah, so they're talking about trench foot there. Basically where your feet are wet for so long that the flesh just starts rotting off it. This is common. That's why you learn in the military to always keep your feet dry. Admin is important, especially for your feet, because you're using them a lot. Bring <laughs> several levels below a paper cut. Lawrence, for his part, dealt with it as he always had. That is to say, remain totally unaware of the avoidance. The same way a man blind from birth cannot mourn the memory of color. Corporal Lawrence couldn't bemoan a lack of company. He was quiet, as he had nobody to talk to, and still, as he had nothing to do for long stretches of time. The enemy trend. How did this guy become a corporal if he's like this? Like you've gotta you've gotta be pretty good with the boys to become a corporal. You gotta you gotta be uh, a leader. You've gotta be able to command people. And if this guy's quiet all the time, how did he become a corporal? less than a mile away had gone silent for several days this amplified the unease that seemed to radiate off of lawrence like heat waves the worst part was that there was no distinct reason to dislike the corporal he was a plain man average height average build bland of voice and action nobody could recall him raising his voice in joy or anger he did have the occasional odd mannerisms however he tended to stare a beat or two longer than was acceptable at people Staring's weird, isn't it? It's always really creepy. It's always really creepy, but like he if he's a corporal should if should be able to give orders. So how did he get this rank? That's what I'm confused about. He rarely slept as well, and bunkmates said he would mumble in his sleep almost constantly. The content of those nocturnal ramblings when they could be understood were often odd and potentially unsettling. Hmm. One private moved to another barracks when he heard the name of his daughter pass Corporal Lawrence's lips, followed by a bubbling, muffled giggle. <laughs> that is creepy. If someone did that, I'd give him a good old slap and tell him to wake up and tell him to saw the red out. It was strongly theorized that he was sent over the trench by his commanders more out of a desire to have him away than for his minimal combat skill. He and 14 of his fellows were sent across the nightmarishly scarred waste of the no man's land between the trenches to scope out the enemy trench and secure it if possible. Many seemed to hope that Lawrence would have the opportunity to prove his devotion to his country by making the ultimate sacrifice for it. It was while he was gone that someone started asking questions. Nobody remembered him ever talking of home. No sweet smelling letters came, no soggy dirt streaked letters left. Questions started to float among even the higher levels of the command. 
Yeah, that's weird. He's going to have some family around. Someone's going to be uh, keen on knowing how they are. Nobody was able to actually find his station orders. He'd come in with a squad of reinforcements transferred from France, but there was no paperwork. The rest of the reinforcement squad had never seen the man before he'd been lumped in with them the night before the trip. Along that's with weird. the snips and scraps of other squads decimated by the Germans. Should be questioning Whispers that, Whispers filtered among the grunts of the corporal being a curse. Nearly every man who'd shared a bunkhouse with him had gotten trench foot, and the rooms he haunted... This freaking animation here. <laughs> it always seemed to smell more musty and sickly sweet, even for the trench. The men sent over the no-man's land with Corporal Lawrence heard and cared for none of this. Just another man among many, all with death certificates awaiting a stamp that could fall at any moment. They moved fast and low, from crater to crater, slipping over slick mud and barbed wire. Cannonball! The only thing that seemed to grow in that blasted <laughs> waste. Charging the last spur and into the trench, they were greeted not with the harsh bark of German orders and rifles, but a dense, closed silence. Do you know what's weird? Horror stories during war, like the Vietnam horror stories, World War Two, World War One, and all these stuff. For some reason, I find them all that little bit more creepy. Like, there's just a little bit more creepiness to them than the average stuff. I don't know why, but like the the military ones, especially at war when there's something creepy, it really gets me, and I don't know why. Preparing for ambush, the men started to filter out into the tunnels and halls of the trench. The men, already nervous, were not calmed by their investigation. The trenches stank of mold, sweat, and a thin undercurrent of rotten fruit. A vile, cloying slime seemed to have pooled in every divot and crack, sticky as glue and itchy on the flesh. Yes. <gasps> Private Dixon found the first body and managed to cry out before vomiting. They knew it had been a man only because nothing else of that size could have been there. It lay on the floor of a barracks. The entire floor. Uh. The flesh of it had been smeared somehow, spread like butter over the rough dirt floor. Bones, already looking pitted and rotten, stuck out at random angles like dead trees in a still swamp. The skull rested on one of the highest bunks. Maybe that's why I find it creepy because there's always weird stuff that happens during war. Sometimes things that are not explainable but are so horrific. It's just, it's just a little bit more creepy, and you can, like, it seems more like this type, like this right here. Someone being, what looks like blown up and smeared all over the floor and stuff is exactly what you would expect from war, and it's disgusting. Facing the doorway, more remains were found, each seemingly more unsettling and strange than the last. Unfathomable horrors were discovered one after the next, sending men retching and running from the trench. Corporal Lawrence was the first to find the hole. It was small, no more than four feet across. It seemed to be the accidental uncovering of a natural chamber, the empty blackness of it defying investigation. Huh. Private Dixon, recovered and blessedly numb from his previous ordeals, saw the corporal prod the edge with his boot, then crouch to peer in, then suddenly slide in head first before the private could so much as utter a shout of question. Ugh. That's One creepy. question later, he could provide little illumination as to what happened over the two minutes Corporal Lawrence spent in the hole. He could see nothing. The light of a torch seemingly gobbled up a few feet into that dense blackness. There Throw the sounds, torch in. The rustle of movement over loose stone or rubble. Should have thrown the torch in. Let's have a look. An odd liquid shifting. A dry rustle that made him think of insect husks. As he shouted for aid, there was a sudden upwelling of a repulsive stench, and his fellow soldiers found him retching helplessly beside the hole when they came around the turn. Mm. It was as they rushed to Private Dixon's aid that the hand emerged from the hole. They stopped and raised rifles as one body, roaring for the owner of that pale, trembling hand to identify himself. As they watched, another hand joined the first, followed by the pale... Guys, this is super creepy. Like, super creepy, like, thinking, it's like, reminds me kind of a Pennywise, kind of, ish. Do you get me with that one? Like, with the, the whole, like, uh, what is it, grid and the and the street? It kind of reminds me of Pennywise, in a way. Pale, shivering head of Corporal Lawrence. He was streaked and smeared with a tarry black ooze, hacking and coughing thinly as he hauled his body up beside that of the gasping private. 
As they moved to help the man, the corporal vomited up a heavy stream of the same repulsive slime that coated uh. his body in smears and globs. They were hesitant to touch him, finally doing so after the seemingly endless river of grime stopped pouring from him. He was insensible, eyes rolling and wide, body as limp as a boned fish. The men fled the trench with all the speed they could muster. Half dragging the corporal, they ran with no thought of cover or death, only escape. They crossed in record time, falling into their home trench, gasping and shivering. One man, known to have bludgeoned a German to death with a brick, curled on the floor in a sobbing heap. The commander... It's so horrifying because you know some really weird stuff happened. So, like, all these horrific acts and barring the weird hole and the guy falling in the hole... There's a lot of horror in war itself, you know, and it doesn't have to be mysterious, paranormal, or supernatural. There's already a lot of horror in war, and I think that's what makes it more creepy, is that the horror that's already there isn't far away from supernatural horror. It's so grotesque, which makes it more creepy because it makes it feel like this stuff could happen, you know? Commanders moved quickly, isolating the men and trying to calm the most lucid for a report. What spilled out would have been immediately dismissed as lies and hallucination were it not for the earnest, pleading stares of those reporting. Command calmed them with explanations of battle fatigue and strange gas weapon tests, and shared silent, focused stares as the cowed men were ushered out. Corporal Lawrence had little to report. Uh... His time in the hole, he could or would say little. He stayed that face is horrific. He that he had slipped and fallen into what may have been some long blocked underground pool or perhaps a buried latrine. Of the uh. sounds and smells reported by the private, he had nothing to say. Only that he had struggled a short time, then managed to get back out just as the men arrived. Oh, no, no. Truly, he seemed none the worse for wear. In fact, he seemed in better spirits than many had remembered ever seeing him, favoring the commanders with a wide, giddy smile as he was dismissed with a warning not to discuss the events. Not one man from that trench survived the Great War, although few died in battle. A wave of sickness took the trench a few days after Private Dixon's death. It seemed to eat the flesh like acid, men waking to find previously healthy flesh eaten down to the bone, oozing and blackened. Corporal Lawrence was remanded to a French mental ward, transferred after several complaints from the hospital proper where he was first sent. It seemed his behavior hinted at a growing mental imbalance. The corporal would ran quietly to the other patients, whispers about endless halls, pursuits in the dark, flesh- I mean, even if there wasn't anything supernatural here, even if it was just him being at war and then falling into a weird kind of rotten pool of water, that in itself, even if there's no paranormal or supernatural stuff attached to it, is enough to send someone crazy, let's be honest. Flesh laid out like pages of a book. It was dismissed as war fatigue. He vanished several times from the ward, only to appear several hours later as if nothing had happened. When pressed, he would begin to sing My Bonnie Lies Over the Sea in an endless monotone until the doctors left exasperated. A stale, musty foulness seemed to sit in the air wherever he stayed. An incidence of infection and the strange, consuming sickness that had beset his home trench seemed to follow him like a cloud. Numerous attempts were made to transfer the man, only to be met with bureaucratic confusion. No records were found of the man. No entry papers, commendations, or incidents. Not even a birth certificate. That's weird. Through it all, he sat for hours on end cross-legged on his bed, occasionally humming tunelessly or rambling off the names of his wardmates between short, bubbling giggles. Corporal Lawrence and 18 men vanished one November night. Guys, this is the creepiest. This is so creepy. Look at that smile. Like, to draw something like that, like, I don't know how you can do something like that. Between a five-minute nurse rotation at three in the morning, the room reeked of rust, oil, mold, and sweet rot. Thick black swaths of crumbling uh. ooze coated the beds and several of the walls, wide patches of it smearing and eating into the floor. Of the men, there was no sign at first. As they searched, one nurse shifted a bed aside only to shriek and nearly trip across one of the sunken, reeking depressions on the floor. In a tight, perfect spiral were what appeared to be hundreds of teeth resting neatly on the floor. 
After counting, they accounted for the total of all the teeth of every living soul in that ward, but one. The corporal was never found, nor were the men. The incident was swallowed by the constant barrage of horrors from the front and forgotten with ease. This is Still weird. they came. Stories of strange deaths, of disappearing men, found days later alive but broken and twisted beyond comprehension. Uh... Stories of estranged dark figures stalking the bomb-riddled towns of Europe. Wow. Wow, okay. Okay. So, firstly, this guy is great at narrating these stories. He has that really, like, creepy, um, I don't know, act into his voice, like that creepy tone, uh, which I really like. The animation was really cool. I think it was unique, and it was really creepy, especially them smiley faces. What do I think of the young man? I think it's weird. I think it's unique. I like the fact that it's uh, incorporating... Like, with, with the other ones I've been watching, it's always talking about, like, how they're containing it, how they're protecting it, and, you know, incidents in the SCP. This is, like, just solely the story of SCP-106 with nothing else attached, and I like that. I think that's kind of cool. Um, super creepy, though. Really creepy. And like I said, for some reason military horror things really give me the eebie-jeebies more than anything else and i don't know why i think it's because like i said war is already so close to horror that that one last little step to supernatural horror isn't that far away does that make sense and i think that's why it creeps me out the most but i will leave a link to the original video down below please go and share him some love because that was absolutely fantastic it really was uh members you're amazing. I love you. I couldn't do this without you. Links down below to all my socials, including the two links to the two different discords, the military and the geek, and also a link down below to my Twitch stream and my podcast. Uh, until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.